I'm sure you're already familiar with acids. They have a sour or acid taste. This is one of the acid's properties, and I will show you a few more in this video. So you can determine whether a solution is acidic by tasting it. This is not something you can do in a lab, but instead you may use a pH indicator. Common black tea may actually work as an indicator. You can try it yourself by putting a slice of lemon in your tea. The tea's color becomes lighter, not because it is diluted, but because the acid in the lemon changes its color. In the lab, we most often use other pH indicators, for example, BTB or bromothymol blue. And now it's time for you to break out some colored pens because now we'll draw what colors BTB has in different types of solutions. First, I draw a test tube here with what's supposed to be an acidic solution in it. If we add some BTB to this solution, it becomes yellow. Let's write that down too, that BTB is yellow in acidic solutions. If we instead have a test tube with a neutral solution, it will become green if we add some BTB. BTB is thus green in neutral solutions. Last, a basic or alkaline solution becomes blue if we add BTB. Blue in basic or alkaline solutions then. As a premium, I may also add that in very acidic solutions like concentrated hydrochloric acid, the solution actually becomes red if you add BTB, but that isn't necessary for you to learn right now. Now, I've already used the concepts acid, neutral and basic solutions. There are several ways to define those concepts, but right now I think the easiest way is to use the concept of pH, something I'm sure you've already heard of. In acidic solutions, pH is below 7. In neutral solutions, pH is equal to 7. And in basic solutions, pH is above 7. Another indicator that we often use in the lab is phenolphthalein. If you have an acidic or neutral solution and add phenolphthalein to it, it will remain colorless. Phenolphthalein is thus colorless in acidic and neutral solutions. If you instead have a basic solution, it will turn red if you add phenolphthalein. Or, well, perhaps it is more like magenta, but kind of like red at least. Phenolphthalein is thus red in basic solutions. Another property of acidic solutions is that they conduct electricity. Here we draw a beaker of pure distilled water. I have two electrodes here and have attached both to a battery and a small lamp. This solution does not conduct electricity. In the second beaker, there's instead some acetic acid. Acetic acid is often written HAC, as I've done here. Writing AQ like this, as usual, indicates that it's dissolved in water. This solution will conduct electricity and the lamp lights up like this. In the third beaker, there's hydrochloric acid, which we can write HClAQ. It too will conduct electricity, but better so than acetic acid. This is because hydrochloric acid is a strong acid. But what that means, I'll tell you in a later video. But why do the acidic solutions conduct electricity? Well, for something, anything to conduct electricity, it's necessary that there are mobile charged particles that can carry the current. In a normal copper wire, it is the electrons in the metal that are charged particles that can carry the current. In an acidic solution, there are instead positively and negatively charged ions. The more ions there are in the solution, the better the conductivity. And that's actually the reason why hydrochloric acid is a better conductor. But as I said, I'll talk more about that in another video. All right then, if acidic solutions can conduct electricity because there are ions in them, we must ask this follow-up question. Why are there ions in an acidic solution? To explain that, I want to show you what happens when hydrochloric acid is protolyzed, that is, it reacts with water. Hydrochloric acid, that's HCl that has been dissolved in water. So we write here HCl plus H2O. What happens is that a hydrogen ion, H+, is given off from the hydrochloric acid. It is instead taken up by the water molecule in this way. What's left of the hydrochloric acid is just a chloride ion, Cl-, and the water has turned into H3O+. 
the H3O plus ion is called a hydronium ion. To this, we now add two important definitions. Acidic substances, that is substances that give off protons, that is hydrogen ions. An acidic solution then, is a solution where there is a high concentration of hydronium ions. That is an important difference. An acidic substance is not quite the same thing as an acidic solution. Another popular acid is acetic acid. Its chemical formula is CH3COOH, but it's often shortened to just HAC. Let's draw a structural formula for acetic acid too. It looks like this. In the same way that you can say that hydrochloric acid consists of a hydrogen ion and a chloride ion, acetic acid can be said to consist of a hydrogen ion and an acetate ion. The formula for the acetate ion is CH3COO-, but we can also write it abbreviated AC-. If we write the structure for the acetate ion too, I want you to notice the negative charge here on this oxygen atom. Let's have a look at the acetic acid's proteolysis too, that is, how it reacts with water. You'll see that it almost exactly looks like the hydrochloric acid's proteolysis. Here I write HAC, that is the simplified way to write acetic acid, and then it reacts with water. Since acetic acid is an acid, it gives off a proton, that is, a hydrogen ion, to the water. What's left of the acetic acid is an acetate ion, AC-, and when the water molecule takes up a hydrogen ion, it is transformed into a hydronium ion. We add here that this is then an acetate ion. Let's write this with structural formulas too. First we have the acetic acid, and then we add some water too. What happens when acetic acid is proteolized is that this hydrogen ion right here is given off to the water. An acetate ion, which we draw like this, forms together with a hydronium ion. The last property of acids that I want to mention here is that acids react with base metals. One example of this is how magnesium reacts with hydrochloric acid. Maybe you don't examine this in the kitchen at home, but in the lab it's a real classic. What happens is that solid magnesium reacts with the hydrochloric acid to produce magnesium chloride dissolved in water plus hydrogen gas. To make it even clearer what happens, we can write it like this instead. The hydrochloric acid can, as I said, be said to consist of a hydrogen ion and a chloride ion. Because of this, we can separate them from each other so that the solid magnesium reacts with two hydrogen ions and two chloride ions in solution. The magnesium is then oxidized to magnesium ions, they too in solution, while the hydrogen ions are reduced to hydrogen gas. The chloride ions, well, nothing really happens to them, making them spectator ions. So, what I want you to notice is that hydrogen gas forms. Because of this, base metals are sometimes called hydrogen expelling. They, so to speak, expel hydrogen from acidic solutions. This is a very common reaction with base metals. Now, if you want to learn more and check your learning, please visit my homepage. You'll find a link in the description.